Good day, and welcome to this overview presentation of the Uruk platform. My name is Munir Ajam. I am the founder and CEO of Uruk Project Management, and I am the innovator behind the Uruk platform. This is a project I have been working on uh, initially as a methodology and then as a software solution uh, for more than 10 years. In this video, I will divide it into part. Part one will be a very short presentation just to highlight some key aspects of the platform. And then uh, we move to part two, which is a demo, uh, actually is an overview because the platform is quite huge. It's really impossible to put it in a short demo. So what we will focus on is only an overview of some key concept. In the future, we are developing a lot of videos, short videos to, to discuss uh, and to show demonstration of the different part and functionality of the platform. So let's start with part one. Uh, welcome to the Rook platform, which we would love to call the engine of project success. We are developing the platform in an agile way uh, with significant agility, building over time uh, incrementally and iter iteratively. Uh, so when we started this company to develop the platform, we have divided our vision into steps. We've accomplished the first two steps, the first major uh, goal. Right now we are working on the third one and uh, which would allow us to achieve what we like to call a solution for integrated portfolio management. That is the objective that we are focusing on right now, converting our MVP uh, from a project management and some of the basic functionality into basically a major uh, solution for integrated portfolio management, meaning it will have these elements that you can see in the image. Uh, the orange in the image are, we call them supporting elements. Each one of these boxes is an element, which means a section of the platform. Uh, so the platform is a collection of software, if you wish, because technically each one of these could be, uh, could be a software on its own. Uh, so the community of practice administrative are supporting, and then we have project management element, we have the program management element, we have the portfolio management element, and you notice we have the PM functions and tools, uh, or PM function that these are uh, to support uh, project and program management and also for portfolio management. Uh, so these are the six elements of the platform that are active today. Uh, of course, when we say active, that means they are at a different level of progress. Some of them are uh, well established, some of them are still, we're still adding functionality to them. If we continue with this, we can see the same picture in a slightly different, more detailed way. Uh, this is our view of what integrated portfolio management is. You have the portfolio management that include portfolio planning, performance, and other things. You have program management, and you have program management. And on the right, you have all the PM functions and tool, and they are at different level. For example, when you talk about scope, cost, schedule, obviously we could be talking about the project level or the program level or even at stage level. Uh, I'm not going to explain a lot of detail, we're just going to keep it over, you know, as a short overview of the platform. The core of the platform, the project management element, you know, 10, 15 years ago when we started to think about methodology, we started in a way here. And then when we started the project management is that the focus was on building this. Uh, now, what is this? So now, obviously, this is only a piece of the platform. However, it's the core piece. And it's what we like to call the value delivery model. Uh, we talked about in a different video, we talked about different PM levels. This is what we call level five. I'm not gonna explain the level here, uh, which is mean to focus on value delivery. Now, this is a typical, some people would say, well, this is a typical life cycle. Yes, it is. However, basically the idea of this life cycle, the word life cycle, the definition of a project, the definition of project life cycle could vary from one place to another. So in a way, what we're focusing on is the belief that the project organization, project owner organization, they don't do project because they like to do project, they do project because they want to recognize some value. You know, if I am a hotel company, my business is not just not to build building, I am the building operating hotel that can drive value to my shareholders. So when we look at project management as the engine of project success, we need to focus on the full value delivery life cycle, which what you see here. Now, What's different here than usual? Most organizations, when they work on project, they are either managing tasks or managing stages or managing the development of a software IT part or the building part, but they are not managing the entire project as a product, as, as an asset that should be delivering value. So what we have done in Uruk is basically we said, 
uh, basically we need to add a discovery phase right which is the front end where we define select the option the business case the feasibility and then in parallel to the actual development of the work whether it's a building or a software there might be some going to market or operational readiness activities that need to happen in initial operation and that's what you see on the bottom right of the screen now our life cycle technically end here but the project doesn't end here the project end with assessing project success sometime in the future and that's what we mean by this arrow the green arrow on the right of this picture anyway this is a big topic we're not going to talk about more details than this right now uh, the only thing i want to mention at this time that this is what we call the standard model however by standard model meaning a model that is adaptive so the project life cycle, the value delivery life cycle for your project might be, or not might be, most likely would be different. We can tailor this, meaning what? Meaning we can you know, reduce the number of stages and stage gate, increase the number of stages and stage gate, change the content of the stage deliverable, change the criteria for the stage gate. You will see some of that as we go on to the demo. Now, current state where we are, we have the project management uh, methodology built in uh, with all the stages, the stage gate, the stage deliverable, the, you know, all of those information is built in. So it's not just a tool, it's a comprehensive solution with built in. And it's based on, as we mentioned, the, the great agility to build tailored method. At this point in time, we have about 50 tailored method built in, and we can build additional method on demand within hours or days. Uh, so if a client has their own process, we can build it for them. Uh, in addition, we have basic program management, we have the community of practice, we have the administrative element as we saw earlier, and we have for the PM functions and action, we have them right now, some of them, not all of them, in a simplified way. Uh, currently, we are working on replacing all of these and upgrading them to become where each one of them could become a tool, and we have a basic portfolio management starting to go live, uh, actually live already. Uh, currently, and currently we mean over the next uh, year or so, we continue to build 40 plus built-in tools. I, I'm, I'm using the term tools uh, because technically each one of these things here, as an example, I'm sharing an example, uh, could be a semi-independent tool. Uh, like for example, managing scope, managing cost, schedule, change, earned value, sustainability, stakeholder engagement, quality, risk, uh, a success module. These are the module, there are probably 20 plus module in this area uh, that help us with focus on supporting project and program management. So you have the PLC management and you have all these modules that support the specialized area. Uh, at the portfolio level, some of these tools would exist, for example, the reporting, performance chart, executive dashboard, captured lessons, document management, and uh, so on. With this, uh, we'll pause and we'll get ready to go to part two, which is a demo. Uh, welcome to part two of the overview of the Rook platform. In this part, we are, as you can see, we are into the platform. So the first time you log into the platform, you will see a screen like this. Obviously, we are continue to enhance the platform, including design. So maybe by the time you are working on the platform, this could look different. However, basically what you will see on the home screen is are the different elements that are active uh, today. And if you remember from the presentation, we have six. And here we go, we have six. Uh, so what do we do with this? That depend on what you want to do. Obviously, if you want to start, you know, when you come into the platform, maybe you would want to start uh, into program management or project management. Uh, it's important to highlight here before I go into the detail. Typically, you have what we call a client admin. So the, a lot of the setup that might be needed at onboarding, it could be done by the client admin up front. So here we assume that you are already, you have some setup already done in place uh, for, for various things. Uh, we will have a video specific to client admin in the future. Uh, so basically today what I want to focus on, so what can we do with the platform? Well, one thing we can actually create and work on a project. So I will show you the step. So in this case, I can go to the menu. I can go access from multiple location. Uh, but if we start with the menu, I go to project management and I go to project setup. So that is the first things I want to do, basically, if I want to set up a new project. Uh, so when we are setting a new project, you will end up a form. So remember, all these templates are there. Uh, and that, so basically what you have, you end up with a project, uh, a sequential project number based on the system. Uh, this is, since this is, I'm using an Uruk account, so I'm already at project 37. Uh, the, the, the form includes few key requirements, uh, only whenever you see the asterisk. So basically, 
uh, we specify that you need the person requesting the setup, the project title, the ID owner. Everything else here uh, is optional. And some of it is locked. Like you can see here on the right, you know, the date activated, date assigned. These are locked because you cannot control this. Uh, you know, when they happen, they will be shown. Uh, they will be, they will have date shown. And over here, you know, the organization unit, you have the opportunity to input organization unit. If you want to sort your project and program in a company or your organization, you can have up to three levels of units. So you can have, a, you know, a high level section, uh, then a division or a department and under the department, it could be uh, a unit, whatever the case might be, you can have up to three levels. And here you notice that the project manager is not a required field uh, yet, because at this time, all what we care about is assigning a sponsor. Uh, so, and then you have information about whether the project part of a program, and then you have information about tailoring the project, but notice these are locked because when we do the tailored method, that's where we will be able to update this information and they will show. Uh, so I'm going to pause and fill some information. So here we filled information that necessary. We filled the requester name, the idea generating name, a project title. I did not put any organization in it and we put the project sponsor and we can put the organization into the sponsor. This is optional. Everything else here is not required and is not, uh, you don't need to put anything. I did not pull any information here. Now, of course, this will become the project profile, so which means we can change it in the future. So let's save. So once we are done, uh, we save it. We save this and it's ready. Uh, however, it stays with us. It stays with whoever is entering the data. You know, it could be anyone who's entering this data. Uh, it saves and stays on their profile. So when they go to see their project list, it will show on their project list. Uh, and that the reason for that is that you can save it, you can come back, maybe you need to go ask some question, you know, maybe you're not sure if this is part of a program or not, and you want to go ask somebody. Anyway, you can always do this and come back and modify it. And once you are ready, you submit. Okay, uh, so what does submit do? Uh, what Submit does is basically uh, it sends the project into what we call the future project list. We used to call that the parking lot, right? And ideally it is part of the future because the project is set up in the platform, but it's not. Uh, we have not agreed or, or decided to start working on it yet. So it goes to the future list and stay there until the sponsors that we named, who must have a senior manager classification in Uruk, will go in and activate the project. So to set up a new project, in the Uruk platform, there are multiple steps. Step one, uh, step one is to fill this. Uh, now notice because I click on it again and uh, that one is saved, it's created a new project. Well, I don't wanna create a new project. So let me just repeat what I just said. To set up a new project, we have multiple steps. Step number one, to fill the form. We fill the form uh, and submit it to the sponsor. We have done that, right? So now we will go to step two. Okay, the screen look identical, obviously, but if you probably did not notice, now I'm logged in as the sponsor. So if you remember, we entered Munir Ajam dash PS as a sponsor, and you notice in this bell, now we have a number that means I've received a notification, uh, right? You For notification, is you set it up when you log in, when you register, and you can have notification only inside the system or through email as well. Uh, so if you are, if you have signed up for email, it, you will receive an email notification and in the future we will add SMS notification. So if I click on that notification, it says the following project test for demo was submitted for review. Right? So now we have a project submitted for review and it came here. Right? Uh, let me pause for a second and mention something. Um, remember this is part of an overview demo and we will be recording demos for every major function in the platform. We actually recorded demos like this a while back and they are already available. However, we're going to replace all of them with a new design, but you would notice in this case, there is a video symbol here on the top right. Uh, uh, that means there is a video for this. You can watch it. I mean, if you click on this now, you will watch their old video, which no, not, not much difference probably. Uh, however, when again, we will be replacing all these videos. So now you have basically uh, the form. And as you notice, we have the information that we entered. And if I want to add information, I can always use the orange uh, pen, uh, click on it to edit. Notice we have the project number and now the date created is here, right? So it's created today. Uh, activated is not active yet, so it doesn't have any date. And uh, now notice that the project manager is now an official requirement. So we have to edit, add, enter the project manager. So clone number two, Munir PM, and uh, we check on it. And that's typically the only requirement in here. 
of course I can add it now you notice in this box I have ability to edit I have the ability to edit here uh, add it here so whatever I can see the uh, ability to edit we can always edit now what can I do with this as a sponsor uh, and we'll have similar decision at every gate, except the gate number one, or actually gate number zero. We call this stage gate zero, the activation gate. You have only three options. You can reject, which means you stop the project. So the project is dead, right? And that is the reject here on the bottom left. Or we can say, well, yeah, sounds good. Everything is okay here, but we're not, we're not ready to work on this project yet. Let's keep it on hold. So we push on hold, and that will take the project to the on hold uh, section of, of our list or you can activate. So in this case, let's activate. So now the project is activated. I am back as Monier is a PM. You notice up on top here and notice now you have on the bell, we have number two, that means there are two notifications there. So the first notification is that basically the following project test for demo was activated. So now we know it is activated. Uh, however, there is another note here that says you have been assigned as a project manager on this project. Uh, so basically, if I come to the project list, and by the way, you can see the project list from, if we go to the menu, right? If we go to, you have project management, and there are more than one place. I'm just to show you one place, and there is a project list here. So if I click on it, it will give me the project list, and uh, as you can see, I have many, so I will need to go to page two maybe now, and you will see that, ha, huh, here we go. This is a test for demo that we created, Obviously, I can edit. I still have the power to edit uh, anything that is editable uh, and then and show that the status is active and the last approved stage gate was stage gate zero. Now, interesting, you notice now we have a team and we have a tailored method. Now, the team is by default two people so far, right? The project manager and the project sponsor. As far as the system is concerned, they don't know if anybody else exists, uh, which is fine. Uh, let's leave it for now. Uh, and then we have the tailored method. So step number three. Step number one, you add the project. Step number two, you activate the project. Step number three, you decide the method you wanna work on. Remember the platform has about 50 methods so far. So we click on tailored method and it's gonna to come to the screen. And this screen allow you to show there are two top section to do. If we work with a client and we develop tailored method for a client uh, or multiple tailored method for a given client and they want them to be restricted, no one else can see them, we can put them in this category. So when a client, uh, a person from this client access the system, uh, depend on what the client wants. If the client want them to see only their restricted tailored method, they will see that, or they will see also our tailored method, right? So it depends on what, uh, how do we do the setup at the beginning of the project for a specific client. Uh, in this case, obviously I'm not, I don't have any client. Uh, uh, I'm not doing this for a specific client. So we have a Rook tra a tailored method. Now, what we have here, you start with a hierarchy and depend on the answer for each question, more question will come up. Uh, so right now, the tailored method we have built, they are in these categories. So let's say we want to select a tailored method for a technology project. So we have the capital project, the technology, general project is for all type of project where we don't have anything fixed yet. And we have maybe a couple of categories for academic. So let's say technology project. And now that will open Another screen that said, okay, usually if we have more, we have not built tailored method for technology except for software. Uh, basically, you can have software, hardware, digital transformation, anything you want, we can build them. And when we add them, there will be options here. Right now, we have only software. Uh, usually, there could be some subcategories. Uh, depend on, on, like, if I was in capital project, there would probably be a question number three, but over here, we don't. So, so far, in these first two steps, we have selected the type of the project. Now we need to decide to check or to decide on the class of the project. And that's usually size and complexity. And uh, we have the ability to manage project from micro project, which means anything that could be, you know, maybe two people working for two weeks, uh, all the way to large and complex where it could be, might be $200 million project. Now, of course, uh, within technology, uh, this here has to be close to technology. So we can define them and said, okay, what will be considered a micro versus small versus medium versus large? We will have to define these for software project, right? And software project, maybe a million dollar might be a large and complex project, whereas an oil and gas, a million dollar might be considered a micro project. Uh, so uh, the classification of the project has to be related to the type. So let's say it is going to be a small, simple project. Uh, and that will open another field now. 
which is how are you going to develop this project? Well, uh, and here where we have agility and agile built in, are you going to develop it as big bang uh, development, you know, or traditional, which means the product will be delivered in one piece at the end of the project, for example, a house for capital project, that might be the choice. For software project, I also have the choice of building, doing it this way or doing it iterative incremental. So this is software. So let's say iterative incremental. The next part is, uh, is operation or no operation, which means if this project, you are producing something that go to market and maybe you need to go to, uh, you need to go to market strategy, embark plan, uh, training, whatever the case might be. Therefore, you need some operational readiness. And then we can say with ops. Now, when we click this, what does it mean? If you remember from the presentation on the tailored, on the method itself, on the bottom right, we have initial, uh, uh, we have two stages, operational readiness and initial operation. So by choosing this, those two stages will appear. If I choose not, uh, no ops, then they will not appear. They will not be needed. Just in case you have a project that maybe you're just doing some increment to something existing and you don't need any of that. Uh, which is fine. So now you basically, we reach the bottom. So let's get tailored. And that will give you now a description of a tailored method. The system would recommend one from what exists within our platform, right? Obviously, if we haven't built anything for this, it will not be given as a choice. Now, how do you know you are in the right track? You can view the, P, uh, the life cycle. And notice here we have the small, it's slightly different than the one we chose in the presentation. In this case, the discovery phase, we had two stages in the standard model. We combine them into two, into one. So we have one stage here. Basic requirements still there. Here we had two stages as well. We combine them together. So the standard model had nine stages and nine gate. This one has seven stages and seven gate. And the symbol here indicate that this is a incremental project. Uh, if the symbol doesn't exist, that means uh, we are building uh, a big bang. Uh, by incremental, what does it mean? That means we have increments. So, uh, you know, when we are planning the project, we have the place an opportunity to add the number of increment. And of course, when we are in implementation, if we decide to increase or decrease the number of increment, we have that capability. If you are not happy with this, you can go back and say, okay, reset the question and you go through the process again and maybe change some of your criteria or if you accept it, you can accept this method. So now we have a method accepted. So step number three of product setup is done. Step number four is adding a, uh, downloading a, a schedule template that we have built in MS project. Uh, it's a lengthy discussion here, so I will skip it. Now by skipping, that doesn't mean it's gone. It means that I can always, in every stage we do it. So let me maybe here a, a, a minute of education. The way we manage project, we believe in the idea of value delivery, so life cycle wise, and then we do what we call rolling wave or progressive elaboration type of planning, right? Which mean we have a high level view of what the schedule would look like for the entire project. And then in every stage, we have to plan the stage before we move forward. And I will show you that in a second. Uh, so now these are the steps. So we added the project, we activated the project, we selected the tailored method, the schedule template we are postponing uh, and uh, basically, now what we have is the set reporting frequency. Now, what's the value of this? Obviously, if you work on project, you need to know how often are you going to report on your project? Are you going to report weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, quarterly, whatever the case might be, which means the performance chart, everything else would, would link to this. Uh, so this is really for reporting. Uh, so it would come down to here, said, okay, how are you going to report? How often you want to report? Well, we're going to report, let's say, weekly. Uh, and then uh, you have to just tell us what day of the week is the end day of the week. So let's say Friday. And with this, we go and we save. And now we have, I think it's saving. Uh, we have uh, the frequency has been established. Now notice a lot of this, uh, this is actually uh, this form uh, is being redesigned right now. It's part of the communication management where we are able to put our, our communication requirement in there. But however, it was important to do this piece early on in the project. So we continue and uh, so we, we selected the communication and then we click save. And with that, that mean uh, we are pretty much set. So what do we do next? We go back to the project and now we are, the project is set up so I can go to PLC management. We need to start managing the project. And so what you will see here, when you go to PLC management, you will see the life cycle that we selected right? It's here. 
and it will tell you where we are. Obviously, everything is gray. That means future. We are in the orange zone, and that little indicator there, uh, it shows that we are still close to zero. That means we're just starting. As we start working, it, I mean, obviously, it doesn't move with every step, uh, but typically, it has, you know, when we are working in this, it goes to the middle, and when we are ready to submit to the gate, it will go to the end. So that's just roughly an indicator that we are just starting the stage. And you can see the same information below. Uh, stage gate zero is already approved, as you know, that's the activation gate. And then now we have this. And the way we set up the system, and we can modify all of that through tailoring. Remember, configuration and tailoring, ta developing tailored method, we have a lot of flexibility of how do we want everything to work and appear. In this case, we are making control where basically you have to work on stage, you go to a stage gate. Once approved, it opens the next stage. So you cannot go work on the second stage until the gate is approved. Again, we uh, all of that is uh, modifiable. So now I am in the project and I need to manage stage, I need to go through a stage. So in order to manage, uh, so let me go back to the difference on the value delivery model. Remember, the value delivery model is about managing the project across the entire life cycle, but we have stages. And within every stage, that is where we need to manage the stage. That is where process group like that PMI produce and ISO produce become into a play here, right? Those, you know, some people think those are project life cycle. They're not. They are processes that need to repeat in every stage. So uh, usually if you uh, pair PMI and ISO, you have five process group. Uh, we have two models. We don't use, uh, we modify what ISO and PMI come up with and said, okay, if it is this project is small, the stages are small, we use a simplified stage management process, which is what you see on the screen. If we are working on big project with large stages, like an engineering that might be 12 months in duration, the stage only, uh, then in that case, we use what we call the advanced stage management process, which is six, uh, 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 six process, uh, processes, six major processes with multiple process uh, uh, process steps underneath them. We're not going to go into that. We will have a special demo for this in the future as well. So we can start with plan the stage. So the first step is we want to plan the stage. And here you can do two things so far. You can add team member. Obviously, every team member you add, it has, has to be uh, someone with a license. Uh, you can assign the role of the people. And you can do this from the team management uh, module as well. However, when planning a stage, if I want to add a person here, I can. And also I can go back to that MS project template and go and typically what we would do if we are working on, if you are using MS project and you are a project that has many people involved, the first step I will do, I will go to that MS project template and I will update my schedule for the stage. That's rolling wave planning. Now I need to plan the stage. So we go and plan the stage and define what activities need to happen in this stage and then I can import them into the task management module of Arook. So this way you have a choice of managing on, uh, on MS project, or you can download them and manage them as tasks inside the platform. Uh, so it depends on your preference and your organization and the type of project you work on. Now you don't have to use MS project. You can just basically go to task management and start entering your tasks there, right? So if you work on small project and maybe you guys don't use MS project, you just go to task management module and you start entering the task. Uh, and we will have, again, I, I'm repeating myself, we will have modules on risk management in the future. Uh, so basically, uh, you will be able to access and see there. So now let's say we plan. I'm not gonna do any work in this case. Let's say we plan. Let me show you what the next step. I will go and develop the stage deliverable. Obviously, uh, manage and control the stage is there. So, but right now this is just simple where you can actually enter some it's more like a journal, right? Uh, I mean, I can show you quickly. Uh, basically, it's a journal where you can enter data, whether you allow comment or not, and you can attach and you post it. And then once you post it, it will open another box. So right now for managing control, ideally for small project, what you're saying, this is more than enough. Yeah, ability to go. Of course, we have the module for cost and schedule. That's different, right? So this is more of the project manager journal, if you wish. Uh, and then we develop the stage deliverable. And in this case, we call it project authorization document. And then uh, you open it up and you will see there are many fields here. Again, I need to remind you, this is our template for you, or if we are developing tailored method for a customer, everything here is modified. Basically every box is here as a text, right? You can go in and so it's not just a row. 
uh, as a text editor, you go and go and enter as much as you want, right? Uh, but basically every one of these, you know, for example, here, you notice there is no question mark. Here is question mark. What is a question mark? This is what we call a root coach. So if you want to explain what this item is, then you can also hear it, right? This one, we said, well, we don't need one. Well, I'm, I'm, we're doing this on purpose right now to show you the difference. Okay. So what basically is telling us right now, that is I can change this question, whatever you want. I can delete it. I can add to it. I can modify it. I can add in a root coach to it. Um, uh, then what else do you see? You notice here on the right, I have linked to tasks. This first one doesn't have that. Now, what does that mean? That means if you have tasks already and you have, let's say, five tasks related to this item, then you can link to them from here. And so basically, and then that means we know now where somebody who's assigned to this work will be here. Uh, now, in addition to this, uh, if I want it on the first one, I can add it or I can remove it. Again, this is we do it as part of the tailored method. So this is something so far we have to do it for you. Uh, now, if you have working on project with multiple people and you want everybody to have an opportunity to review an input, they have the opportunity to click on, on this and they can go and put comments. So basically, in this case, they are putting comments specific to that item. Right? Uh, and then uh, this is different than chat, by the way. Chat are on top. You can chat as team. There is a, a chat opportunity and there's community forums. Uh, I haven't talked about those. Uh, those exist. There are community forum where you can create discussion with all Rook users anywhere in the world, or you can have a chat within your organization and you can create group chat, which means for a team within your organization. Uh, all of that is there. So you have the opportunity to here to, uh, to go all of this, uh, to basically to do all of this. And then at the end of the day, uh, let's say at the bottom, uh, you can also attach document. I'll notice you can attach document to every field. So for example, for major risk, let's say you've done a risk assessment and um, you don't want to type it in here. You can attach it as a document. That's your choice, right? Uh, or uh, now you want to attach a document to this whole thing. Uh, you can attach a document. Or maybe there is a field that you think, ah, for this project, I need to add something specific. You can add an information block. And so uh, when you do all of that, uh, then basically you will be ready to move onward, uh, forward. Now, what will happen next? Uh, let me first pause and then complete this field. Okay, I completed, I mean, obviously I just put some word in here. All of these fields are required. Uh, of, uh, if something that in your case you don't need, you can just put NA. However, if something you don't need as a company, we can remove it when we do, when we modify the tailored method for you. And then when we're done, basically you can save and when you finish, you can submit. Now you will notice when you submit, uh, here is telling us uh, basically a warning that uh, that you have in your cost module the, and schedule module, the ability to do the estimate uh, if you want to do them. So you can redirect us and you can go and do those estimate or we can skip and submit. Now, typically on a project like this small medium project, a small simple project, we typically have two estimating point. Uh, you can skip one, right? Uh, there will always be one required. So if you skip this, you must complete the next one. Uh, so for now, let's say skip because we will show this as a separate video. So we skip. So now success, proceed. Okay, it's submitted and obviously you can see everything else here. Now it is locked, right? However, let's say you submit and you uh, say, hmm, we, uh, we missed something as a project manager. If you catch it very quickly, you can actually recall the stage deliverable and we'll reopen everything. If you don't push recall, now this is with the sponsor ready for gate review. I will show you that and I will end the, the video there. Now I am logged in as a sponsor and you notice I have notification. If I click on the notification, it says the concept and feasibility stage, uh, they can go to view the all notification. Uh, And it, because I read it over there, it already showed it as read. Uh, its test for demo was submitted. So we have uh, the stage submitted. So I can go to the detail. And then I will be able to uh, to see that, ah, yeah, it's submitted. I can edit it if I choose to as a sponsor, right? Or I have these options. Now notice I have more options than stage gate zero. If you remember, reject meaning we are canceling the project. So if I push reject right now, all the stages will be locked, except it will open the closed stage because we're saying even if you reject a project or cancel the project, terminate the project, you still have to properly close it. So that will go there. 
uh, or you can send it for revision. Say, ah, I don't like the risk assessment. I need the guys to do more risk assessment. So I can revise it and I can put a comment to basically telling the team to go back and revise it. Or we said, yeah, sounds good. Everything is okay, but you know what? Some other priorities come up. We need to put this project on hold. That's the choice. Uh, or we can provisionally accept it to move forward, but have basically what that means that something is missing, we still need to do, but it's not urgent. Uh, or we do final approval. Uh, so uh, basically, uh, so we'll say the final approval. And then I can say whatever I want to say here and we'll say approve. Right, so in this case, we approve the document, right? And in a way we approve the stage, right? So we approve the gate. However, I want to show you something else. So what else do I show you? I, I, when I come to PLC management, obviously what we said is that you can go to the next stage and you do the same cycle. So I'm not gonna show you, uh, continue with the video on that because almost identical steps. Uh, what I wanna show you is that if I go back to the home page, and then we have the PM function in action. Right, because remember we had that cost estimate that came up. And uh, you will notice now I have, uh, and again, this will be, will look differently in the future because we are modifying this and we're adding. Right now you can see here only about 10, uh, but there is much more that we are adding uh, and they will be, uh, they will go live uh, incrementally over the next few months. So, but basically what you have right now, everything here right now is the basic module uh, remember that we are replacing all of them, right? Uh, so, but basically here where you be able, like if you look at the cost management, remember the trigger us to go to cost management uh, and notice now this is the estimate one that we should have completed, but we ignored it, right? Uh, so nothing else is shown here. Now, when we go later, it will open whenever there is specific time along the life cycle. Uh, by time, I mean trigger based on the gates, right? So now we are in the requirement stage. Nothing is open here. I cannot do anything. Once we approve the gate for the requirement stage and we're gonna go to the planning stage or the, not the planning, the project uh, management and detail plan, uh, that would open estimate too. So those estimates open and close depend on where we are in the life cycle as part of the governance and the logic we put into the system. And you will be able to enter, but not, right now I can, I can start to do reporting and this section here is for reporting. However, again, I'm not gonna explain all of this because all of this is changing soon. Uh, but uh, you will see there is this cost management, you have the schedule management, you have change management. What we have built so far, these things, the reason they are here, because from these, we can see the performance chart. So let me stop and show you performance chart from an old project, because this is a new one, we don't have anything yet. Now, this is a project we finished about a year ago when you know we're still testing the system, and it shows that basically we are in the performance chart area. Uh, so uh, you will have the project information and then you'll have other information. For example, does the project align to strategy as a part of a program, the cost index as an indicator, and the cost index as a trend, the schedule index as an indicator, and the schedule index as a trend. And when we come to schedule, we measure two things. We measure duration and completion date. So we look at the completion date variation, how is it changing over time, and we look at the uh, duration index, whether the project is becoming longer or shorter. So we measure both of these areas. Uh, there are other chart here, um, uh, issue resolution, uh, basically issue management status, change management status, cost impact, change resolution index, cost impact of change. Uh, we have already about 40 chart built in. And as we continue to build and add new module, we continue to add chart. Now these chart will be for projects, and for program, they will be quite similar, right? Except the program will probably have few more charts than, than the project chart. Then we, now we are rolling out the portfolio management. You will also end up with a portfolio chart. Uh, and those, again, once they are available, uh, they are under progress right now, actually. Uh, and then they will be able to share them. With this, let me end this uh, demo. So it's uh, quite a lengthy demo, but to provide a general information about how do we manage uh, and how do we use the platform, at least from an overview perspective, not as detailed. Uh, remember, this is not just a tool. Uh, this is a comprehensive solution that allow you to manage project, programs, portfolios, 
the entire portfolio for an organization or an organizational unit. You can also sort by that uh, and many, many more things. Mm -hmm.